Well, greetings, Pastor Eric here from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Redmond. It is so good to be with you on day 22 as we continue through chapter 6. Today we're just on two verses, chapter 6, verses 10 and 11, which read in this way. Finally, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. He's writing these to the Ephesians who had been drawn away. And he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You may know the story of the pastor who was standing in a pulpit and Sunday morning was going along really well when suddenly a flash of light and smoke appeared in front of the pulpit and followed by a huge boom. The smoke cleared and the astonished congregation saw a red figure complete with horns, pitchforks, and a tail. Immediately panic set in. People crowded out the doors and the pa uh, pastor took off through the back door. Everyone cleared out except the guy sitting over there in the third row. He sat there, just he sat there alone, just kind of looking around, not scared at all. The devil said to him, do you know who I am? And the man said, sure I do. And then the devil said, aren't you afraid? And he said, no. Satan was puzzled and he, he said to him, well, why not? And the man said, well, what for? I've been married to your sister for 35 years now. Of course, that's a bad joke and it's not true. but. But it would be a mistake to think that the devil or Satan or the powers of evil are not real. That would be a mistake. Paul says, finally, after all that I've talked to you about, the assurances, the blessings, and the actions of the Christian life, the actions of the devil are very real. <clears throat> Most often we go through life, functions of the day, not thinking too much about um, the spiritual battle that's going, going on around us and within us, the spiritual battle that's going on all over between forces of good and evil, between holiness and sin. Everything that happens during your day is a battleground around which and upon which a spiritual, spiritual battle occurs. Really, it's true. When you talk to people at work, there's forces that compete for your loyalty and your decisions that's, that influence the way that you do your job. When you shop online, when you go to Amazon.com, there's forces at work within you that seek to draw you away from what you know you should do. When you search the internet or channel surf at home after work, there's forces that battle for your loyalties to choose what is right and what is not right. You're drawn into that battle. Your life is a, is a spiritual battleground on which the forces of good and evil are raging. And it shows your loyalty. And in the battlefield of your life, your commitments, your money, your actions, your decisions, all of that are a spiritual battle upon which Satan and God are doing battle. Now. It's clear what the outcome, the ultimate outcome will be. God has already won the war, but the battle continues. God's will and way will prevail and God's purposes will be accomplished. Absolutely. The outcome of the war, the spiritual battle is assured. In the end, God wins. But until then, the spiritual battle for our hearts, our loyalties, our conduct, our character, our convictions, all of that, that battle continues for control of those things. Um, oftentimes, we think about the power of devil. We think about demon possession, being possessed by the devil. And there's movies about that that you've seen over the years, people who were, you know, taken up by the spirit of devil. Sometimes we think of demon possession as people like, you know, Adolf Hitler or Saddam Hussein or, or Osama bin Laden or whatever, people who were possessed by the power of the devil because that's, that's oftentimes an obvious, other than us, kind of feeling where we kind of, outsource the devil to someone else. Let me tell you something that happened just this last week. A woman came in with a, a friend came, a Zion person who's been visiting here, came in with a friend and um, she was broken as could be. 
I mean, this is just the last couple days. Broken as could be, wanted to see a pastor. He says, I know a pastor. So they came in and she was in pajama pants, no shoes, um, just broken as could be shaking because she had been um, kidnapped, taken away. Uh, she's from out of town, no money, no broken as could be. Had been involved in some satanic, demonic kind of things where, you know, I mean, seriously, this just literally happened. Um, bound up, um, Satan worshipers doing their stuff, blindfolded, screaming, all this kind of stuff. She's weeping in the back row, sitting in church here. And um, the friend who brought her in had been reading Bible verses to her, talking about the blood of Jesus, you know, being with her and shunning all that stuff. Um, we had an exorcism prayer at the back of church here, um, just within the last couple of days, casting that demon, devil stuff that was ingrained in her. She just, she couldn't get away from it. So we had a, we had a casting out prayer for the blood of Jesus, for the, the light of God to shine in her life, or looked at the cross, we did the whole thing. I mean, we kind of think it doesn't happen, but it happened right here in beautiful Redmond. And she was absolutely broken. And I'm hoping to keep in touch with him and her that that might have brought a change or started going in the right way. Anyway, it, it, it happens not just out there. It happens right here. It happens in subtle ways with us too, where we think, oh, we're fine. The devil isn't really real. But that was kind of a possession or whatever it might be kind of experience that she was having and she wanted to be freed from that. So. Demon seduction is also very real, but very subtle. She was maybe experiencing some type of demon possession or, or some type of overcoming that she couldn't get rid of. But with us who don't, haven't had that kind of dramatic, horrible experience, we maybe struggle a little bit more with demon seduction, little things. Little things become a big deal when we let the devil get a foothold in our hearts. When we think that little seductions, like sexual seductions, like success seductions, like nobody will know what I'm doing. What I'm doing is not really going to hurt anybody else. It's really not going to make a difference. When you start to think that it's something you can't tell your spouse about, and it's not that big a deal because nobody's going to know. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. When the devil finds a soft spot, soft spot in your heart, and when you let the devil in for that, then you're opening yourself with all, to all kinds of hugely negative consequences in that. That's why Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God that we'll talk about tomorrow so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, which are very real. Being a Christian in our culture, in our time right now with the media, with the values, with the whole post-election stuff, being a Christian in our culture where we're tempted, we're letting the foothold in our heart to believe things that may not necessarily be true. When we start thinking things that are so horrible about other people, when we start not loving and respecting and honoring other people, the devil gets a toehold in our hearts. And it is a direct contradiction to the strength of the Lord that God and Paul calls us to have. Um, sometimes being a Christian is going the wrong way on the freeway when the culture, the time, the media, all that kind of stuff is going against us. We have to stand up for truth. We have to stand up for justice. We have to stand up for people for whom other people are not standing up. That's what God calls us to do because it's a battle out there. 
It's a battle out there. The war has been won by God, but the battle for the control of our hearts and minds is still raging. Um, the devil is real in our lives, make no mistake about it. The more you kind of think, oh, I'm just fine, but what I do really doesn't matter, it does. And that's giving a toehold for the devil to infect your heart. Kind of like I mentioned a couple of times before, that bowl of chili on the, on the stove that spent overnight on the, on the flame that just got soured. Christians can't let that happen to their heart. So how do we defend ourselves? Well, the battle rages on even though the war has been won, won ultimately by God. But in the next verses, Paul tells us about the whole armor of God with which we are able to withstand the devil's schemes. So he mentions six pieces of equipment that we need and they're not just uh, wasted pieces of equipment, but they're what we need to stand against the wiles of the devil. Serious stuff. He wants to end up this letter to his beloved Ephesians with saying, stand strong in the strength of the Lord. That's what I want for you too. Let's close in prayer. All-knowing, all-powerful, all-protecting God, thank you that you are the resurrection and the life and the death and the devil. Hold no power over you. Your word tell us, your word tells us that even though we walk through the darkest valley, the darkest valley, that we will not fear evil, for you are with us. Thank you for your strength, your power, and your protection. Be with, with us at this time. Thank you that nothing separates us from your love. Keep us ever and always close, close to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day 23. You take care. Bye-bye.